in the South, they used to have these three liter sodas. You know what I mean? It had that pop to it, that sizzle. So we're doing the checkout. We go through the drink and I'm, I'm grabbing the bag and the lady like didn't initially give me the bag. She kind of held it a little longer so I can like look up and give eye contact. And when I looked up and gave eye contact, I'll never forget this moment. And she was like, ma'am, say it, ma'am. And my grandmother looked at me and it was just a deflating moment. My grandmother always spoke her mind, wasn't hesitant to say anything. She was the matriarch and the patriarch of our family. But in this moment, I saw my grandmother extremely vulnerable. I saw her weak. In that moment, I was spoken through, I was spoken at, and I was spoken down to. We were silent in the car for a moment as we drove off from there. And my uncle had shared some words that just stayed with me for a long time. Racist motherfuckers. The reason why my family had migrated from Columbus, Mississippi was for opportunity. It wasn't for equality, but it was just for better pay. I'm a proud son of racing. It taught me a lot about grit. It taught me a lot about community, good and bad. From the second I jumped off the porch of my grandmother home, my reality and what I observed was far from normal. I didn't even know that I was suffering from trauma after seeing those visuals. I just found the way to get through by being focused, staying true to the mission, and the mission was survival. My dream was to be in a life that was just ordinary. I didn't have to worry about, you know, someone trying to take my life. I wanted to open the door without being exposed to eviction notices. We put the black garbage bags on the windows so if someone came on the porch, you didn't know if it was people inside. And it was because of the landlord popping up wanting his rent. I could always just remember my grandmother trying to figure out how I was going to make it in society, how I was going to carve out my niche eventually uh, to become who I am today. I'll never forget walking across that stage and just went up and shook the commissioner's hand and I just couldn't stop crying. It was the best feeling in the world. It was just all that sweat equity, all that generations of prayer. I think that when I made it, my entire family made it in that moment. When I made it out, I wanted to come back and change the narrative. You don't do the work for symbolic recognition, but you do the work to just inspire people, to give people hope. That's what I had lacked as a child. I just lacked a lot of faith and hope because I just didn't see someone coming back and doing amazing things. I know what that visual would do for the kids in our community. Getting a street name after me in Racine was just unbelievable. I was thinking about everything that has happened in the past, specifically on that block. I was thinking about walking to the community center and getting free lunch. I was thinking about the shootouts that I've witnessed and I was a part of on that block. I was thinking about my first knee scrape. I was thinking about the collect calls that came on the payphone. I was thinking about all those things in that moment. And then I thought about what that kid would see coming down Karan Butler Drive and knowing that someone from the community that got real roots in this community gave back in this way. And when you ask stories about this black man that came from the community, it would be positive stories. I addressed the crowd, but I still felt like the post wasn't right. Someone that came up to me and they told me that a kid that I was familiar with, familiar with his family, was lying dead up the street at the end of Karan Butler Drive. He was shot by law enforcement. I was just, I was speechless. And one of my biggest moments where I was extremely hopeful 
one of the most devastating things that could possibly happen. And it happened on my street. And I felt like I had to get in front of it and talk. That was our moment for our community. I was just like, this shit isn't right. And this has to change going forward. Racism would not be corrected in the calendar year. Racism may not be corrected in our lifetime, but we have to understand that the history of it is over 400 years strong. But if we are engaged as collectives and we decide that this is a we thing, it will get corrected. And that's why I'm hopeful because I know that people are starting to get engaged and they're making sure that, you know what, this part of history will be part of the fabric of my quilt. I will have my fingerprints all over the social change in America.